What is AWS S3? Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer with over 10 years of experience working in the financial services sector Monday to Friday. I'm five times AWS certified and I like nothing more in my free time than making YouTube videos on AWS topics. What is S3? S3 stands for Simple Storage Solution. It's a cloud-based object storage solution from AWS provided to us in a cost-effective manner. It has 9.99% availability and 9.9999999, that's nine nines, durability. To achieve this rate of availability and durability, the object that we upload to AWS is replicated across three distinct physical locations within the AWS ecosystem. So why use S3? Well, we've already hinted towards it. S3, you only pay for what you use. Traditionally on-premise, we had to pay for servers, racks, and disk space, and we weren't utilizing this all the time. Or if we were, we had to go out and provision more, and this took time. S3 removes that barrier completely. You only pay for what you use. So if we have one tiny object, we're only paying for by the gigabit, or if we have many objects and need to scale quickly, AWS provides that for us. We can also version with S3 where we can keep track of how that object changes over time as we delete and upload that object repetitively from the bucket. S3 also offers lifecycle management policies where we can use intelligent tiering or define our own policies to move the storage class along of that object as it persists over time. What that means is we can start in standard class where it's replicated across three distinct physical locations or AZs. Then over time we can move that into infrequent access, which is one location. And then eventually we can move that into Glacier, which is a long-term storage archive where it's extremely cheap to keep data. S3 is one of the services that's absolutely fundamental to everything we do in AWS. So the best thing to do is to get some experience by joining me on the console now and I'll take you through the basics. Okay guys, that's me logged into the AWS console. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to S3. So I type in S3. And we click on the S3 service. Once on the S3 service, we're going to create a bucket. And you do that by clicking create bucket. And then we need to give the bucket a name. Now the bucket must be unique within the entirety of AWS. So I usually find putting my name in the bucket name makes that so. So Johnny Chivers demo one. You must select a region. So although AWS S3 is global, you have to select a region to set up your bucket. And that's because the data, as I explained in the intro, gets replicated across three distinct locations. And this tells AWS what three distinct locations within a region you want to use. We're going to block all public access. We're going to leave off bucket versioning for now. And we're going to come back to that later. So let's just create that bucket. It takes a few seconds and the bucket is created. You can then click into that bucket and we can have a little look around. So the first thing we're going to do is upload an object so we can explore some of the settings. So click upload, then click add files and find an object that you want to upload. So I have a demo object I'm going to upload already waiting and I click open. We'll leave everything as default and we'll upload. So as you can see that object's been successfully uploaded and we exit. Clicking onto the object itself, you can see that there's lots of information. But the one thing we're going to pay attention to is versions. So if we go to versions, you can see that the bucket versioning has not been enabled. Would you like to enable bucket versioning? I'm going to say yes. And bucket versioning has now been turned on. Back into properties, back into versions. The current version is null because I've turned bucket versioning on after I uploaded the object. If I uploaded the object, when I had versioning turned on, there would actually be a version ID. So to prove this, let's go back onto the main bucket page. Let's go to upload. Let's go to add files. And let's add another file that's new. So I'm just going to upload this log file. I'm going to upload. And you can see that that's been successfully uploaded. I'm going to exit this screen. I'm going to click on the log file. If we go to versions, you can see that it actually has a version ID. Whilst if we go back into the bucket and we click on the S3 demo object, and we go to versions, it's null. Now, if I'm to reload that object, or upload it again, is it probably a better way of phrasing that? This time, it will overwrite the current object, but it has versioning on, so we'll end up with two versions of that object. If I exit that, and if we click into it, 
go to versions, you can see that the first one was null, but the second one we have has a version ID. Now this is really important for the exams. AWS asks this all the time. What happens with version ID if I upload an object and then turn on versioning? And the answer is the version ID is null versus what happens if I versioning already on and upload the object the first time that object gets a version ID. So really important point for the exam is a null version ID occurs when the object already exists in the bucket and then you turn on versioning. It comes up as a question all the time, so just bear that in mind. Of course, when you have versions, then you can delete a version. So if we go back to the first version and we go actions, sorry, and we go delete, we brought to the delete page, you have to type in permanently delete to confirm that you want to delete that object and we will delete that object. Exit. Then if we look now at versions of that object, we only have one. Back onto the bucket. Okay, so once back on that root directory again, let's have a look at the management tab. The management tab contains the lifecycle rules where you can move your data through different storage classes according to the rules that you set. So let's take a quick look by clicking on create lifecycle rule. So the first thing we need to do is give that rule a name and that's test. We're just going to apply it to all the objects in the bucket and acknowledge that. We're going to do current and previous. And then what we're going to say is we want to move to uh, infrequent access after 30 days. And we're going to do the same down here. So after 30 days, our data will go from the standard access, which is replicated across three distinct locations, to IA, which will see our object only replicated across one location after 30 days. And let's create that rule. So that lifecycle rule has now been created and is applied to our bucket which means after 30 days, the data in our bucket that was first uploaded will move into infrequent access. So let's go back to the main page. And just one last thing I want to show you quickly is permissions. We're not going to do it, but if you wanted to create a bucket policy, this is where you would do it. You can do it by editing, and then you have the option of taking a policy that already exists, so you could give grant permissions to like an SNS queue, or you can use the AWS policy generator to create a policy for that bucket. The last thing you might want to do before um, closing down the session is delete the bucket. So if you go back out to your main page, highlight it, delete the bucket, you actually have to empty the bucket first. So click on the hyperlink, then type in permanently delete or whatever phrase AWS specifies for you. Once it's empty, you can go back onto the bucket again, back onto the console, back onto the bucket, and this time you can permanently delete. And again, you have to type in the bucket name to delete the bucket. And that's the bucket deleted. Okay, guys, so that's everything for today on this beginner's guide to AWS S3. I've been Johnny Chivers. I'll make all this information for free on my website as usual, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. And until next time, thanks for watching.